Look at somebody and say, who can find, who can find? A, high value woman? a high value woman? And as I was going to the Lord in prayer about this, this prayer, Father, the world has enough tough women. How many know we need more tender women? The world has enough coarse women. We need more kind women. The world has enough rude women. We need more refined women. The world has enough women who are chasing fame and fortune. We need more women who are chasing faith and fidelity. The world has enough women focusing on greed. We need more women focusing on godliness. The world has enough women focused on popularity. We need more women focused on purity. The world has enough women wanting to compete with men. We need more women wanting to create with men. We need more women of faith. And lastly, the world has enough women of vanity. We need more women of virtue. Look at somebody and say, who can find a virtuous woman of character? A mother came home from a busy schedule of work and she had three children and, and she had her, her mother pick the children up from the daycare and, and, and she was having a hard time trying to get past her, her business meeting to get home to, to pick up the children so that they could uh, get home and get them in bed before night. And as soon as they got home, praise God, uh, uh, the little four-year-old uh, 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 who she had promised to spend some time with uh, uh, came to her with the doll in the dollhouse and, and, and she had promised to spend time with this child but she had a report to get out by the next morning so again she took a picture of a cover of the old world it was a U.S. world and report and she tore it into pieces and she told her little four year old child baby put this puzzle together and as soon as you put this puzzle together a mama will spend some time with you and play with you and the little child walked away with a little tear coming down her eye. But the child came back 10 minutes later. She had put the world together and the mother was just so surprised. She says, how in the world did you put the world together so quickly? The little four-year-old said, it was easy, mama. On the opposite side was a picture of a man and a woman. When I put the man and the woman together, the world was together. The word of God reminds you and I regarding how value men, how value women, unless the Lord builds the house, the labor is in vain. And God is challenging you and I as we go through this series of high value men, high value women to realize that we got to learn to trust God if we're going to live the life that he has called us to live. Now, the challenges that we're having in the world started all the way back in the Garden of Eden. How many of us know Adam and Eve had a good program? God set them up in a perfect paradise in the Garden of Eden. Yes, sir. Couldn't get any better than they had it in the Garden of Eden, praise God. They had everything they could possibly want. God gave them access to every tree in the Garden of Eden for themselves. And God only had one requirement. He selected one tree tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, I tell you what, this one tree I don't want you to eat from, and you know from reading where do you stand why God did that. Because of free will, we all have choices. And God wants us to love, trust, and obey him, not because we have no choice. God wants us to love, trust, and obey him. Why? Because he is our choice. And men and women have a choice. Are we going to follow God's plan? Or are we going to follow the world's plan for what we call success? And if you understand God's plan, praise God, the Greek word for father is pater. Every man should be a protector, a provider, and a priest. 
Now, God ain't going to come back and measure men. How well could you clean houses? <laughs> you can clean like Mr. Clean. And, but still, and it's a good thing that you can do clean, but that's not what he created you to do. God is not going to measure a man how well he can make up a bed. Right. He's going to measure that man where you are a protector, a provider, and a priest for your family. Amen. Amen. And God's not going to measure a woman no matter how successful she is in the world. Praise God, uh, how much you made on your job. He wants to know. If you choose to have children, did you take care of these children? I came with an amen already with me. If you choose to get married, did you make the house a home? If you chose a man to live with, did you honor your husband? And Titus reminds you and I that we can have it all, especially you ladies, if you don't give in to fear. And the world is challenging uh, uh, you to, to, to skip God's plan. Yes, and I've got a plan for you. You can go out in the evening, put the food in the pan, come home at night and still love your man. Amen. And you can fall for the world's plan, but there are many people in our generation, praise God, because of the opportunities that have been given us, have forfeited God's plan yes, sir. for the world's plan. Yes, sir. And if walls could talk, you could go behind a lot of homes right now. People that got nice houses, they got a lot of material things, but they all alone because they don't have nobody but themselves. Amen. Amen. And God said in his word, it's not good for man and woman to be alone. Yes, How many of us know the Bible says, says that one can put a thousand a flight and two can put two, ten thousand a flight and, and a threefold cord is hard to be broken. Mm -hmm. And when you bring children into the world, y'all, I'm trying to remind you that the number one responsibility that we have is to train up our children in the way that they can go. And they are a gift from God. He's given us the children, and when they get to be adults, we present them back to God. Yes. And we want to present them back to God as healthy, whole children. And you can get to a certain age to where you can do it all. But when a child comes into the world, how many know God is not impressed if six weeks later you're sending that child to the daycare so that you can go off to work? Amen. Amen. Oh, I wish I had an amen in here today. Amen. Praise God. I know you career women saying, hey, I can do it all. Yes, sir. But let me just say it like this. Character is formed in the first three to four years of life, y'all. Yes, and if you don't get Christ in that child doing that stage, it's like cooking an egg. How many of us have ever fried a scrambled egg and you did not wash the pan as soon as you got through? You said, oh, I'll wash it when I get home. <laughs> From work. And you let that egg sit in that hot sun and I'm going to know you got to work 10 times as hard to clean it if you would have did it at the early stage. And that's why we say often you train the child in the playpen and you won't have to visit them where? In the state pen. And God is challenging us in our generation, praise God, to understand he has a wonderful plan. And once your children get in school, you've got more opportunities to do things like work. But he's not impressed. If you want to drop a child off in a daycare six weeks after you brought them into the world, Amen. unless he builds the house, we labor in vain yes, that build it. Yes, 
So what are the qualities of this virtuous woman, praise God, that is so special, praise God? We call her in this generation a high-value woman or a high-value man. And the world going to tell you, praise God, her value is based upon uh, 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 how much she makes and, and what dress size she is and all this worldly stuff that seems to be so important to people in the world, praise God. But the Bible says a high-value woman or a high-value woman, it says a woman who fears the Lord. Somebody say reverently respects. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if we're making this woman up today, praise God, with the V in value. Somebody say victory, victory. Over, the enemy. over the enemy. In this generation we have, praise God, how many know that God has blessed every one of us to be a victor and not a victim? Anybody believe there are no victims in the kingdom? Yes, oh, praise God. You, we know from people that you've met, praise God. I've shared stories with you like a, a Joyce Meyer who had gone through over 200 challenges that she went through in her life. Amen. And, and, and when, when, when she was asked, would you change a thing about your life? And, and she said, no, the Holy Spirit didn't reveal to me that God didn't help me to help many other women who have gone through less than me know that it's no secret what God can do. What he did for others, he can do for you. You've only had one or two experiences. I've had over 200 experiences, and God has blessed me to have a happy marriage, a happy ministry, and a happy life. And if he did it before, guess what? I've told you about people like Candy Lightner. Own daughter gets run over by a drunk driver. Heartbroken. But three days later starts an organization called MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and wipes drunk driving off of the face of the United States. Somebody say, she's a victor, she's a victor. and not a, not a victim. And we don't go through life, praise God, having experiences and not getting over those experiences because there's no pain God can't heal. Have I got a witness? Yeah. There's no hurt God can't heal. And we come to Jesus just like we are with our heartbreaks, our hangups, our habits, and he heals our broken hearts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he gives our life a brand new start. And we learn, praise God, that whatever comes by the will of God shall be met by the grace of God. Anybody know his grace is sufficient? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He takes trials and turns them into triumphs. And he can take your message, your mess, and make a great message out of it. And that's the first quality of a virtuous woman. She is a victor, and she's not a victim. The I, somebody say she's into Christ. She's into Christ. The word lets you know that if any man or woman be in Christ, we are what? New creations, the former things have passed away, but you got to behold it that all things have become new. Anybody got a new walk? Amen. You're walking by faith and not by sight. You're speaking the word and not your circumstances. You're calling things that are not as though they are until they are. You got a new look. You're not moved by what you see. You're moved by what the word says. And you begin speaking the word and not your circumstances. And God begins to allow his word to work when we work it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you want to make sure if you are a, a high value man, you need a high value woman. Praise God that's into Christ. Amen. Oh, I love it when I see these beautiful couples on Wednesday studying the word together, y'all. It's a blessing in God's sight. How many of us know iron sharpens iron? Yes, sir. And when you got two people studying the word together, you know that whatever comes by the will of God is going to be met by the grace of God. Because whenever you got a disagreement or you got a challenge, it's not who's right, it's what's right based on the word of God. Amen. And how two can two walk together unless they agree? And when two people make up their mind to do what Mary told us to do at the wedding in Cana when Jesus did his first Miracle, they ran out of wine at this wedding. And what did she say? Do whatever the Lord tells you to do. Who's going to do that in your life? Praise God. 
If the Lord tells me to do it, I'm going to do it. If I'm a man and he tells me to love my wife the way Christ loved the church, I'm going to love her like Christ loved the church. Amen. I'm not going to worry about it if she's going to receive it or not. Just do what the Lord tells you to do. Amen. And if you're a woman, you submit to his leadership in the Lord. Quit worrying about what he's going to do or what he may not do. The devil says uh, he may not do the right thing, but God says, I got it. And you put your trust in me. Yes, sir. Not in the world. Yes, sir. We got too many people that still saying, well, you know, I know what the Bible says, but uh, 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 this is a new day. So what we're going to do is a 50 50 love. <laughs> you ever heard folks come to you with that? Now, you already being blessed by God. And all of a sudden you break your plan with God to try to get with somebody that want to do it a different way. You are already a tither, and, and some of us have grown past 10% on tithes. You get so blessed by God, you say, well, God, you done blessed me so much, half. I, and I done went to 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 and 50, and then all of a sudden you get yoked with somebody that's not a tither. It's like, we can't be giving all our money to God. <laughs> and it's like, aren't you being blessed? Do you have any lack for anything? Well, I was thinking that if you just quit that, that the ministry stuff and you just focused on this, you could make more money. <laughs> and you get to a point to where it's like Job. When his wife, uh, uh, he got sick so long to the flesh fell from his bones. And what was her advice to Job? Curse God and die. You're talking like a foolish woman. The blessings of the Lord are coming in our life, north, north uh, uh, south, east, and west. But you're trying to get me to change the program for what you see. Yes, sir. And that's the same thing Eve did in the garden. When God had already given them a program. But she got to thinking. Instead of thinking <laughs> that she had a better way to do it. And women have to make up their mind, praise God, when, when people come to them with a feminist agenda. And, and again, another thing you got to pray for, ladies, don't let these folks come to you with this lesbianism stuff. Right. Amen, lights? Amen. God knows what he's doing. And we make up our mind to trust him even when we can't trace him. Next is resolve. I'm talking about real resolve. And one of the definitions of character is the inward resolve to do what's right in God's sight at all times. And you make up your mind if you want to be a woman of virtue that respects God. It says a woman who fears the Lord. And that word fear means reverent respect. She's worthy to be praised. She's going to do what's right in God's sight whenever she can. She's going to make up her mind, God, I don't have to see it, but if you said it, I believe it. Because I know it was already settled when you said it because you're not a man that can lie. You're not a man that can fail, praise God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, but most important, he can't be pleased without our faith. And she has made up her mind, y'all. I'm going to trust him. And I'm going to do what he tells me to do even if I can't see the way. Amen. And you're going to have some friends come up to you and say, baby, Ray Charles can see what you're doing ain't working. <laughs> Stephen Wonder can see that ain't working. But I promise you, if you trust and never doubt, I gotta, have I got a witness, he will surely bring you out. Even if he has to make a way out of no way. And that's a highly valuable woman when you got a woman like that, praise God, and, and the measure of a woman like that is not where she's standing in moments of calm, comfort, and convenience. Anybody can say, I'll do it when your pocket's got the mumps. Yes, sir. But God wants to know what you're going to do when you can't see your way. We were talking about it in Bible study, a song by Donnie McCurkin. I know faith is easy when everything is going well, but God wants to know, can you still believe me when your life's a living hell? Can you still trust me when you can't see your way? And that virtuous woman, that high value woman says, I trust you, God, even if I can't see the way. Because you 
or my source, not my job and not anybody else. And then, as Proverbs 31 says, in his heart does he safely trust in her. The next quality, somebody say trustworthy. trustworthy. Now God wants you to always put your total trust in him. Amen? Amen. That's what Proverbs 3, 5 says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. But if a, if, if a high-value woman gets a high-value man, how many know he's going to be trustworthy? Amen. Just like the Lord, you're going to be able to take him at his word. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And you're going to be able to rest in the fact that he said he was going to do it. If he get, you get home and, and, and your car was on E and he says, uh, oh, baby, I'll take care of it. How many know the next time you get in the car, it's going to be full? That's what a trustworthy man is going to do. And you can understand his ways, praise God, because he's seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness. And he knows all these other things will be added unto him as long as he takes care of God's business. God's going to take care of his business. And he just has to learn to follow God's instructions. God tells him to love her the way Christ loved the church. Amen. Amen. And if you love her the way Christ loved the church, she will be willing to submit to your leadership in the Lord. Amen. But a high value woman needs a high value man. Amen. And we need to understand that's God's plan for the family to create a highly valuable type of love. Not the type of love that people say they got your back and when trouble come they wave back. <laughs> type of love when, when they meet a friend on Facebook and all of a sudden they want a no fault divorce. <laughs> what do you mean a no fault? That's worldly stuff. You don't have no reason to get out of the relationship but you done seen something that you think is going to be the grass is greener on the other side. Now you think you want to get out of a covenant. Uh -huh. yes, sir, Worldly folks don't know nothing about covenants. Right. I didn't want to marry him for his money but that's the only way I could get it. <laughs> that's worldly stuff. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm up in Plano getting introduced by the mayor of Plano to give a speech and she said, I'm not gonna be long. I'm gonna be like Elizabeth Taylor told her last husband, I'm not gonna keep you long. <laughs> Introducing our speaker, James Parker. <laughs> now Elizabeth Taylor been married seven times. And if you go through seven relationships like many of these man eaters are doing in the world, praise God. How much know sooner or later you need to look at the man and the woman in the mirror? Yes, sir. Quit pointing the finger at all these folks. Somebody ain't no good men out there. <laughs> you need to check yourself yes. before you wreck yourself yes. and other folks' life who put their trust in you. Mm -hmm. But a highly uh, uh, high value woman, she's a virtuous woman, and she's going to do what's right in God's sight, no matter what's going on. And not only is she Understanding trustworthiness, somebody says she has understanding. She has understanding. And that's another word for wisdom. The Bible says, in all thy getting, do what? Get understanding. Get wisdom. Get hooked on the book. Grow up in God's word. Study to show yourself approved. Become a workman. Somebody say, you got a work, man. That rightly divide God's truth. That need not be ashamed. I was so blessed this morning when Deacon was saying that uh, for so many years he had tried it his own way and it wasn't working. He finally got to the point to where if I keep doing what I'm doing, I'll keep getting what I'm getting. And when he finally made a decision to turn right and keep straight, he was saying, I must have woke my wife out asking her questions about the Bible. And how many know he can appreciate a godly woman that know the word of God? They can tell him where to go and tell him what this means. And even then, thank you, God, who can find a high-value woman. But are you sitting up there thinking that uh, you're ready for a relationship and all of a sudden you go on a date and you say, well, let's pray. 
and the eyes get so bigger than a bullfrog in a hailstorm. Pray? <laughs> Us pray? You better check yourself. How much you know a high value man or a high value woman needs somebody that can pray with them? Amen. Pray over them. Amen. Can it intercede for them in times of trouble? Yes. And if you're not fit, somebody say, get fit. Yes, sir. You got to start somewhere. But the more you do it, the better you'll become. Amen. But you Amen. need that if you're going to be a threefold cord with the Lord. That's hard to be broken. You got to grow up in the word of God. These folks in the world talking about high value don't mention nothing about God. Oh, I need a man. I make six figures. I need a man that makes six figures. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And do you know the money that six figures can buy can't pay the down payment on what a godly woman or what a godly man brings to the table. Yes, sir. You sitting up here with a worldly concept. We not equally yoked. I make more money than him. I reminded that this couple, a while back come to me, the woman was a career woman, and she's saying, well, pastor, I met somebody, but he's just a plumber. He didn't go to college. Are we equally yoked? And I said, well, let's look at this. He owned his own home, do you? No. Actually, I'm upside down in my house. He own a business, do you? No. And you asking me, is he on your level? He need to be the one coming to me saying, is she on my level? <laughs> but that's how the world and fool people and hoodwink them to thinking that ego is what's running things. Who you are is not what you got. It ain't what you do. That job could be here today and gone tomorrow. Yes, sir. And it ain't how you look. You're sitting up here with somebody that all they are is wrapping paper. Yes, sir. Don't know nothing about the word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Can't pray over you. And if you ain't there, some people fold at the first sight of storm and weather. They looking at it almost maybe raining. <laughs> And they're already looking for the next one. They ain't no high value woman. You need somebody going to be with you. Thick and thin. When you go through something and you're in the hospital visiting hours, don't apply because we won. Don't tell me nothing about 9 or 10 o'clock. If he's here, I'm here. If she's here, I'm here. That's high value. And that's what God wants for us to have. Amen. Quit getting caught up in the wrapping paper. I got somebody you, I want you to meet. How does she look? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that all you got? <laughs> and I say this in love, y'all. I was looking at one of these old uh, uh, photo spreads that I did years ago. And I was in this magazine called Ebony Bachelor of the Year. And, and they do the photo shoot. I got my shirt off and <laughs> tennis racket in my hand. Say, James, what kind of woman you want? What kind of women you like? And you know, all I'm talking about was wrapping paper. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Need to be this tall. Need to be this size. And you look at stuff like that and the things you used to be proud of, you become ashamed of. Yes, sir. When I was a child, I thought like a child and act like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Yes, sir. You ask me today, what type of woman? It ain't got nothing to do with no wrapping paper. It starts with the heart. Man looks on the outside. But when you grow up like God, what does God look? God looks on the heart or the inside. That's a high value woman. She's got a good heart. And she's going to be there until the end. She's unique. As I wrap this up, y'all, she ain't falling for the world's tricks. She is special. She know who she are, she is, and who she is. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. she ain't trying to compete with no other woman. Right. She knows her stuff is good. Oh, yeah. And she knows, as you read Proverbs 31 on your own, that if the, the man she's with don't appreciate it, right. somebody else will. Because yeah. there's a whole lot of men out there wishing they had a woman like her. Yes, sir. And a man would be a fool. To act a fool with a woman like that. 
to let 15 minutes of pleasure cost him a lifetime of pain. Right. Yes, sir, End up singing that OJ song. She used to be my girl. <laughs> she used to be my girl. And I say this in love, they don't come around every day, every week, every month. Right. And if you find a high value woman and you find a high value man, you better respect yes, that. Yes. And if you think you're wise, God will let you become a fool so that you can be made wise. Yes, and lastly, a high value woman and man are special, y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you look at the word, in 1 Peter 3, it says about the woman. What makes a woman special in God's sight? It's not your hair. And God don't mind you looking good with some hair. Amen, lights? Amen. It's not your jewelry. It's not the clothes. And God loves for you to have nice clothes. Amen. But it's the quiet, gentle spirit which is of great worth in God's sight. So if it's of great worth in God's sight, how much know it's going to be of great worth in a man of God's sight who wants a high-value woman because he's a high-value man? If you can receive it, give him praise today. Yeah. Father, we hear you loud and clear. Yes, sir. Who can find? a high-value woman. In this man's heart, he can safely trust in her because your word says she would never do him any harm. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is vain. It's fleeing. But a woman who reverently respects the Lord is worthy to be praised. We give you glory, honor, and praise for all the women striving to be high value men, high value women to be joined with high value men. Receive our prayer now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a praise offering.